Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Brenda Davis and I am co-author along with Fasanto Molina of Becoming Vegan Express Edition. And today what I'd like to talk to you about is breakfast. A lot of people have asked me uh, what my favorite breakfast is. So I'll tell you a little bit about my favorite breakfast and then I'll talk about some other even simpler breakfasts that you can do that are nutritious and very quick. So first of all, my favorite breakfast is cereal. And I don't buy the boxed, puffed, or flaked cereals. I tend to do um, sprouting of grains. So I do use things like a, a kamut and spelt, and I sprout them. And sprouting, really, all it involves is you take your sprouts, and this is probably a half a cup of sprouts, and you soak them overnight, and then you drain the water, and you take your, your, uh, your jar and you just turn it on its side onto a little saucer. And uh, your, your sprouts just have to be barely out, so maybe just a quarter of an inch. And then to prevent them from growing too much longer, you can actually slow the sprouting process by putting your jar in the fridge. And so what I do, I love to have a variety of fruits. So this is just uh, bananas, apples, pears, because it's winter time, so it's a lot of winter fruit. And I, I freeze probably about 300 pounds of berries. And so also in here is some frozen berries that I've just thawed. So I've got raspberries, blueberries, and also some plums. And these are all local fruits that we get. I live in the Okanagan Valley, so we get a lot of wonderful fruits here. So I've got my fruits and I will just sprinkle probably a, a quarter cup or so of these sprouted grains. My husband really likes something a little more substantial. So I make a cooked intact whole grain cereal. So I use the very same grains I use for sprouting like oat groats and spelt or kamut. And I cook them and add a little bit of milk and some dried fruits. And so you can put some of that into your bowl as well. And uh, and then the other thing I love is this um, granola because it just gives that wonderful crunch. And this is a buckwheat sprouted buckwheat quinoa granola that's dehydrated. And this is just an oat uh, granola that's also dehydrated. And the neat thing about this is a lot of people say, well, granola is so high in sugar and oil. I don't use any sugar and oil in my granola. What I use is bananas, apples, and a few dates, uh, and almond butter. And so I blend that up in a food processor and that's my liquid ingredients. So that you can make your, your sprouted buckwheat granola or your oat granola that way. And then I'll put a little bit of um, uh, walnuts on top. Walnuts are a wonderful source of omega-3s. And then the other source of omega-3s that are tremendous are ground flax seeds, chia seeds, and hemp seeds. And so to make things fast, I actually combine all three of them and then just sprinkle the three on the top, probably about a tablespoon or two. And the other thing I always love to add to my cereal is at least one Brazil nut. I don't know if you know this, but one Brazil nut provides almost double the RDA for selenium for the day. So it's about, about 100 uh, milligram, or micrograms of selenium and all you need is about 55 micrograms a day. So I'll just slice that on top. And sometimes I will make homemade yogurt or homemade pear cashew cream to put on top of that as well. That's usually for a treat. My preference for milk is uh, soy milk and I love just unsweetened soy milk. There's enough sugar naturally present in the fruit. I don't need any additional sugar in my, in my milk. My preference for soy milk is partly because it's a lot higher in protein. So in a cup of soy milk, you might get six or seven grams of protein, whereas in a cup of rice milk or hemp milk or coconut milk or almond milk, you'll probably get about one or even sometimes less than one. So I tend, and I also, of course, like the taste of soy milk. 
So I use organic, unsweetened soy milk. Sometimes I make homemade almond milk for a treat because it is absolutely fabulous. The other thing is I always make sure it's fortified. So you get an additional 300 milligrams of calcium, you get a boost of B12, some vitamin D, so that's all good. But of course there's a lot of variety. So if, if you prefer, you can have a rice, hemp, coconut, almond milk, whatever you like. So some people might say, wow, your breakfast is complicated. <laughs> And it is a little bit complicated because everything's homemade. But once these things are done, like when I make a batch of granola, it'll last for a month. And I actually keep it in the freezer and just take out little bits at the time. And the cereal will last for a week. So it's, it's not as, as labor intensive as what you might expect. If you want a fast and easy breakfast and you prefer having toast and peanut butter, I just want you to know that that's okay, <laughs> you know? Toast and peanut butter, two pieces of toast and some peanut butter will give you about 15 grams of protein, which is really pretty decent for a breakfast. The other thing to know is the heavier your bread, you can see this stuff, this is this really heavy rye bread. The heavier your bread, the lower the glycemic index on the bread, the, the slower the absorption of the sugars from the bread. So, so this kind of bread is, is excellent, this really, really heavy bread. You know, the rule of thumb with bread, especially if you have diabetes, is you should be able to stand on your bread and it stay intact. <laughs> That's a bit of a joke, but really, it, it, the heavier the bread, the better. So you can have your banana on top of your peanut butter. The one thing that I would suggest is having some sort of vitamin C source with that breakfast because that will help with the absorption of iron from your breakfast. So uh, a grapefruit or an orange would be perfect and if you don't have time for that you can always have a little bit of juice too. Although again that increases blood sugar much more rapidly than if you ate the whole fruit. Uh, the other thing, if you really want to get some calcium into this breakfast, which is a really good idea, is to have tahini and blackstrap molasses. Just a tablespoon of blackstrap molasses has about the same amount of calcium as a half a cup of fortified soy milk or cow's milk for that matter. So, and tahini is another reasonable source of uh, calcium. So that would really boost the calcium content of that breakfast. Probably the easiest breakfast of all is to do some sort of smoothie. And you can use a fully fortified non-dairy milk, you can use some nut butter, you can use some hemp seeds or hemp seed protein to really boost the protein content of that meal. My co-author Vasanto loves to have a, a, a green smoothie or a smoothie for, for uh, breakfast and then have a protein-rich food because she her blood sugars fluctuate more. She likes to have a really high protein sort of mid-morning meal like lentil soup or something like that. So breakfast doesn't have to be a traditional meal. Uh, for my son, his favorite breakfast is scrambled tofu. So there are lots and lots of options. Anyway, I hope I gave you some good ideas for breakfast and I hope you enjoy your breakfast.